All right, my friends, it's time to go deeper. We're gonna continue on the concepts that we started um, like yesterday about men and women, Israel and the nation. Um, obviously what I wanna say is gonna sound controversial and perhaps it is, but Controversial doesn't mean it's false. It means it's something that um, is a bit provocative and it's not necessarily understood that way. And therefore it, sound, it might sound as something against what has been told before, but it's not. <laughs> I mean, some of it is because sometimes we perceive the world in a certain way and it's the wrong way to look at it. But, but what, what I want to try to create here is a type of surgery. We need a brain and heart surgery. Now, a surgery is not good. It's not bad. I'm sorry. Surgery is not bad. It feels bad. It's painful. It's suffering. But really, it's good. Because it saves you. <clears throat> so, so we need to do surgery on the way we understand the world. We have to understand when we come to the days of Moshiach and Olam Abba, we barely have any idea of really what's going to happen. We understand there's going to be unity. We understand that there's going to be God's kingship revealed on the world. We understand there's going to be Jews and non-Jews. But what's going to be the state of the world? What's going to be the relationship of the Jews and the non-Jews? Um, and you know, how it's going to work out and that where, how that a unity works. It's, it's hard to understand. As I spoke before, there's a, there's a historical trauma where the Jews, because of anti-Semitism and all that stuff, um, which really I had explained in a previous video, anti-Semitism is created by the Jews themselves. If we don't love ourselves, the, 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 we create a hatred between each other as Jews, and therefore this is gonna be create individuals. It's allow the snake to create the evil powers to create hate, hatred towards us, and that's Esav's job, Rome, the Western world, um, to hate us. We we are we are is the karma of our own hatred, but I don't I don't want to focus on that. We understand that we are suffering from a view of the world that the world is our enemy. Even 99% of the movies and 99% of news and everything is always good versus evil. Light against darkness. The hero versus the bad, you know, the, 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 the villain. So we have to be very careful with that mentality because in that frame of in that mind thinking, that way of thinking, we want to destroy the other. We want revenge, these feelings, negativity that the snake gets involved when really the goal is not to destroy the night. Night is beautiful. Look at the stars. The goal is not to destroy evil. Evil has in it the potential for good. Plus, we know there's no such a thing as evil, right? On on the high, high, high level, Gamzu Letova had called called Mad Rachmana, called Rachmana. Sorry, Every, uh, I'll say it in English. Everything that God does is good, right? Letavavid. Everything that God does is for the good. So. Yes, it looks like evil. When I have surgery, it's painful. I'm suffering. It's, it's, it looks evil. But there's good coming out of it. It's healing me. So now let's try to look at that in the, in the, in the deeper, con on the more macro concept. We are not the enemy of God. People have created themselves as the enemy of God because, because they felt inferior. This God and this us. 
So look at it from the perspective of today's world, the, uh, in terms of fem uh, masculinity, femininity. Oh, this God is the male, the so powerful, and then this us, the world, the nations, and we're the female. Also, oh, we're inferior to God. Also, oh, so therefore, let's fight him. You know, let's, you know, it's not fair. So we're trying to put God lower, or we make God into human being, right? <laughs> Make God, God becomes like us. We are God. I am God. So therefore, you know, the same thing, the men saying, I'm a woman. I identify a woman. I'm a woman. I identify a man. I'm a human being. I identify as God. We're trying to put everything equal. But you don't understand that from the beginning, there was a type of equality. And even... It's not completely true because nothing can be equal as God. Although we are part of God, so technically we're equal to God since we are part of Him. But we know we're not God. God is, is beyond, right? It's, it's a paradox that we cannot completely resolve because we, our brain is not made to be able to understand that. So how does it work? We have to understand that even though we are created beings, we are not God himself. When his image, we are loved. We are precious. We are everything. God loves us. And this is, has not been recognized because our mistakes, we feel inferior and not fit to be God's wife or to be God's partner in creation. I feel like me, I'm material, I'm nothing, I die, I'm full of sins and desire and temptation. How can God want me? How would God want to be my spouse? And God said, no. The sin of Adam Arishon, the chet ego, the gold, uh, the, or the golden calf, the sin of David Amelech, greatest Jew, the sins of Moshe Rabbeinu. Hashem says, I love you anyway. If you sin as an individual, as a nation, this is the Gemara says, if you sin as an individual or as a nation, I will still love you. You're still my wife. It's okay. Just become better. Work on yourself. That was what happened with Cain. And that he didn't want to be better. He, he, he was... He felt too bad. He didn't want to do better common than make do teshuva. And Adam Arishon, same thing. Actually, Adam Arishon kind of at the end more, but at the beginning he rejected it. It's my wife, it's my wife's fault, it's the other. I cannot handle myself that I'm so low compared to you. I, I, don't, I'm, I don't see myself fit. And that mentality has lead, led, with the, we know the Tower of Babel, to have the world fight against God and say, you know what? We're bad anyway. Story of the flood. We're temptation. We'll never be like God, we're fit to be God's spouse. So let's just do whatever we want. Let's do be completely physical and just have pleasure and at least enjoy this world. God said, you don't need to do that. You don't need to just enjoy this world. You can enjoy this world and the next world because I love you so much. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you make. You can always come back. I will always keep you as my spouse. It's forever. So, we need to do brain surgery and heart surgery with the way we look at others, the way we look at other nations, especially for the Jews towards the non-Jews. Well, it's also the non-Jews towards the Jews. The Jews are looked in Kabbalah as the male, the male power. So we had God, right? And, and the world come out of God, right? Men, the world come out of God. And then you have Adam and Chava comes out of Adam. And then we have Israel and the nation comes out of Israel. Or we could say Israel comes out of the nations. Either or, it goes well. But there's a male, female. But in Kabbalah, is meaning there's one that is giving and one is receiving. The problem that, uh, that we have suffering for the past 5,000 years is that the woman is the receiver. Therefore, she's inferior. The man is a giver. He's a male, uh, you know, alpha. 
And I'm giving you, I'm providing you. You don't understand that the whole reason why you're a giver is because there's a receiver. Without her, you're nothing. Your power to give is only relevant as much as you can have a receiver to give to. Otherwise, it's <laughs> what's the point of being a man if you don't have a woman? So we have to understand that we have been suffering for the past five, well, since the beginning of creation, basically, of misunderstanding and not appreciating what the feminine power is, what the female power is, what the physical is. The physical, and we have the, also in the spiritual, and out of the spiritual comes the physical. We are the children of God. All of us. We all Jesus. We all son of God, so to speak. Remember, Jesus was an Orthodox Jew. Don't make the mistake. It's time for Christian to come back to who Jesus was, which is a religious, religious Orthodox Jew. Just he preached a lot of love. So if you want to be good Christians, go back to the root of your religion, which is being a Jew. Um, but we are all children of God. We are all sons of God and daughters of God. We are all children of God. Oh, God says, I need a firstborn. I choose a firstborn. This one has the capacity to be the leader. And because of that, the leader, the Jews, are going to feel that they're superior to non-Jews. Or the non-Jews are going to feel that they're inferior to Jews. Chas v'shalom. We're not inferior. One is a man or a woman. Is a woman inferior than a man? God forbid. Is the Bechor, the firstborn of in the family, greater than the other kids? Does the, do the parents love the firstborn more than the other kids? Chas v'shalom. God forbid. It's just the firstborn has the unique quality of being the firstborn. And therefore, he has, yes, a greater responsibility on his shoulders. And uh, uh, more attention is put on him so that he can influence the other kids in a positive way because he's the guinea pig. And if we succeed with the first one, we succeed with the rest. The Jewish people are the, just like we saw with Corona, the, the how do they call it? The, the lab. Right? The test, testing lab of the nations for Corona. Well, what do you think it's referring to, hinting to in, in heaven, in a deeper in a spiritual level? It means that, yes, if, we, if, if, if God can succeed with the Jews, he'll succeed with the nations. <laughs> right? Because the Jews are super stur um, stubborn. I'm Kshioref. So we have to understand, God doesn't love... Uh, 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 um, the the non, non the Jews more than the non Jews in the sense that yeah we we are better chas shalom he loves more that unique he he's putting more love into us yes he's showing more love into us yes he's investing more into us yes because of the responsibility we have to be a light into the nation. We need that strength, we need that, that light, we need that guidance. And then we can do the same. So, but it, it's not that we're better, right? It's make a mis we, we make the mistake. Yes, the man goes to work. Yes, the man ha ha is physically usually stronger. Yes, the man has intellectual reasoning that is usually greater than the woman in terms of being rational and not connected to one's emotions. Does, him, does that make him better than a woman? No. A woman has a lot of qualities that the man doesn't have. And not only that, the man cannot do anything without the woman. Not a baby, not nothing. Ask a man to have a baby. How many men will agree to become pregnant? <laughs> I don't think much. And women, they do it again and again. Is the greatest miracle of life. Thank you to all the women for giving birth to children. Um, so we see that the woman is called Gvura. Gvura is the strength. In a way, the woman is much more powerful than the man. And that strength comes also for the fact that she's 
she's the receiver. So she looks like she's inferior, but really she's stronger. She's stronger because she needs to be a receiver because she's like, as if she, it looks like she's second class. She needs to be given more power so that she can handle the man and direct him in a way that he needs to. We see today that women are much more powerful than men. Look at, you know, the feminist movement. Women make more money than men. Women make better parents than men. Women are more emotional than men. More Women are more and nicer and softer and more the children like the mother most, most most in most cases so we have to stop creating that good versus evil man versus woman spirituality versus physicality where the physical world the material world is not evil no it's like you say my heart my head I love my head better than my heart. I love my head better than my heart. Well, 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 it sounds stupid, right? I love my right hand more than my left hand. Okay, but that's you. You, you, <laughs> you want to chop it? Do you want to? You also your left hand is evil now. Your heart is evil because you love more your your head. No. So the same thing with a man and a woman is the same being. Right? The man is the head, the woman is the heart. So which one is more important? It's no more important. Just one has a great form. More, the, the head directs more the heart into making the right decision, even though it's emotional. But remember that without the heart, there's no brain functioning. There's no blood going into the brain and it, you're brain dead. You're, there's nothing. So same thing with the nations. The Jews at the head, Israel, Rosh, El, they represent the thought of God, the head of God, right? Which, which is the, li the light that, that needs to shine the world of understanding God. And the nations at the heart, which has to do with the emotions, that's why they represent 17 nations, because seven is seven lower spheres, correspond to the more emotional part of humanity, of Adam, the more physical part, the more material part. The problem what has happened with time is that we have called the woman the physical, the female, the, yeah, the material world as Tuma, it's Tame, which people wrongfully translate as impure. Oh yeah, you know, women, you know, they get the Nida, they, they impure, they, you know, they, they're very physical, very materialistic, you know, they, it's all about the external, you know, make themselves beautiful, temptation, They love to buy shoes, it presents the body. So much time on their body. What you don't understand is that that body hides in it the greatest spirituality. What you don't understand is that the reason she's Tame, you know why you're the woman is Tame when she has appeared, she's called impure, which doesn't mean that, it means a spiritual blockage. She's Tame because she has the super powerful potential to bring a soul in this world, a baby. And therefore, when there's so much holiness hidden there, when it's not fulfilled, there's a blockage, a spiritual trauma, so to speak. So we sit Shiva for seven days. Then you may, it's Shiva, you may need her. But really, we know a klipa, a klipa protects the fruit. Klippa, the physical, the woman, protects the soul, the soul of man, protects the spiritual that is hidden. What we have to come to realize is that the physical world, the, 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 the non-Jews, the woman, is not our enemy, it's our greatest ally, it's here to help us, it's, it's ourself, it's another part of ourself that is here to help us work so that we can go deep inside what... It hides something inside. The nations of the world hide something spiritual for the Jewish people. They are the rainbow of the light. For 70 nations, Noah, Noah hides is the rainbow, uh, 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 you know. Because why? Because the Jews represent the light, pure light, and the rainbow 
takes that light and shows all the color of the rainbows, which is the secret of Hanukkah with the seven branches, the, the menorah. In the way Hanukkah is, you have Israel and the nation, the seven and the one that makes the eight candles. In the middle, you have the light of the Torah. So it's nine, the menorah with nine branches. So that's not for now. If you look at the name Yud Kevavke, there's something called the Milu, the hidden letters, which represents the, the, the greatest part hidden inside it, the depth of it, the soul of Yud Kevavke, so to speak, if you could say such, such a thing, the soul of Hashem's name. So Yud Kevavke, if you spell it Yud, is Vav Dared, Hey, you, Hey, Yud, Vav, Vav, Aleph, Vav, and Hey, Hey, uh, Hey, Aleph, sorry. The hey Aleph. So there's different ways how to spell it. But um, if you, well, actually, I'm going to tell you right away. So I don't make the mistake. Better to be sure now. So we have Yud is 10, 11, 12, 19, and 7. Yeah, so Yud is Yud, Vav, Daled, Hey, and Aleph, Vav, Aleph, Vav, and Hey, Hey, Aleph. So we end up with 19. So this actually, uh, Yud Kei Vav Kei, this crown on the level of Asiya, is, it's, it's because the different combinations of how to write the letters, spelling the letters, it can be spelled different ways in Kabbalah and Gematria. Um, it represents to the levels of the world. And here it's represented to the lowest world, meaning Asiya. So Hashem on the, on the, in the deepest, level connected to our world spells is the gematria chava chava which is because it's 19 19 is chava with 19 is 10 is perfection what's the last thing that god made is chava it's not adam it's chava the last step the completion hashem is hinting to us that the female aspect is what it's all about that the greatest hidden secrets are hidden in the most physical and the deepest darkness of the world. Did you ask yourself why Moshiach came from non-Jews? We think, say, yeah, Moshiach come from Jews. Um, excuse me, did Moshiach come from Avram or from Lot? Parashas Vayera. No, it come from Lot. And very interesting, uh, did it come from like a healthy, loving relationship between a husband and wife, you know, uh, holy Avram and Sarah having children? Or he came from Lot sleeping with his daughters, incest. So you're telling me that Moshiach comes really from the most darkest, most twisted way of, 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 of uh, that, 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 Possible, <laughs> and it's coming from the deepest darkness because we, and and, and then root converts right. So you have the Moab with children of Lot and his daughters, and then out of that comes uh, root, and root converts. The so transform transformation, the complete transformation of darkness of the nation into something spiritual. So. The Moshiach is born from, from the non-Jewish world, in a way, which is fascinating, which is telling you that the woman is the, is, is the, fe the female, is the nations. The Jews are the male, and the women are the nation. And who has to give birth? The nations. But they're going to give birth to a baby based on... What Israel, with the male, who is going to give the seed, what type of seed are you going to send it? Send who to her? You want Moshiach, you got to love the nation. You got to love your wife. When you make love with your wife, you have to love your wife. Otherwise, you're not going to bring the soul of Moshiach, you're going to bring the soul of anti Semites who are going to reject you because you're not being loving. Why did Chava separate from Adam? It says in the Midrash, Rabbah, where she is, that Adam and Eve slept together. It says even in the, in the Gemara and even in the Zohar, everywhere. So she slept with Adam. They, they were both naked. 
Rashi said. And then the snake saw that and uh, he got jealous, whatever that means. But what happens is that why did Chava was alone after they were together? They were alone because Chava, no, this is, sorry. So the Midrash Rabbi says that Adam was sleeping after they had relations. After they had relations, Adam was sleeping. There's not the opinion that Hashem took him around the world, like to see what, or take him around the world. And why is Chava looking for, to, to, to speak with the snake and get involved with the snake? If Adam is sleeping, obviously there was no physical body. Adam was not physical. Eve was not physical. They were spiritual beings, very high level. And when they, uh, so she, he was sleeping, meaning his consciousness was sleeping. He was not, when a man sleeps with a woman and then he's sleeping after, it doesn't show that he has interest in his wife. So the woman one needs to speak. She was just created. Are you already bored of her? So she needs attention. The woman needs attention. That's her natural being. She needs love. She needs emotions. Actually, the Midrash says even that Hashem gave even more desire, even say more sexual desire, not just with the sin, but desire to be with the woman because men were not interested enough. Because men were super male. It's all about, I just want to think about God and be holy and be connected to the spiritual. The, dangers, the danger of being a religious Jew. I'm just connected to the spiritual. I just want to learn all day. I just want to be holy. I don't want to be busy with the kids, with doing a living, with we're working and uh, exchanging diapers, doing the dishes. That's for a lower spiritual level. Uh, 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 uh. You got it all wrong. Your spirituality is only, uh, is only good as far as it's used to go into the physical and to infuse the physical with the light. Because the goal is to see that within the physical has the most spiritual light. So are, you're bringing the light of the outside to the deepest thing inside. You're reconnecting the light from beginning to the end, which is the concept of Tsim Tsum. And the, for those who know the Tsim Tsum picture, with the line, the Kava Yashar and the Igulim. You, the light is as deep, if not deeper, right in the middle, or rather end, middle, deepest darkness than on the completely outside of the circles. We bring, we bring the two. So we have to see that really the physical world, the material world, the woman, is all good. There's no bad in the world. Everything is good. Yes, we see evil stuff, but it's not intrinsic evil. It's the misuse of the good. That's what evil has become. And yes, it's painful and it's hurtful and we don't understand how is it possible? How can God let that happen? But we all say Gamsu Retova. After every terrible tragedy, there's always a renewal, a tremendous light coming. After the Holocaust, three, day, three years after the Holocaust, the Jews are dancing in Israel with a, the, something we've been crying for 2,000 years, the loss of Jerusalem and Israel, and we now have a nation in Israel. And after every terrible tragedy, every, after every exile, the Jews rebuilt themselves and became so glorious in every nation. By the way, why do you think the, the, the Jews were sent as exile? Okay, exile, go all in one place and stay there alone. Exile. No, no, no. God say, no, no, no. I'm going to do an exile. Well, I'm going to send you throughout all the nations of the world, all on the four corners of the earth. Why? Says the Gemara, because you need to bring the sparks back, the lights all over hidden in the physical, into the material. You're going to have to go deep, put your hand deep in the mud 
to bring those sparks out. You want to go back to a spiritual level higher in, from Gan Eden before the sin, you're gonna go need to deal with the physical to the deepest level. The greatest rabbis are the ones who deal with the most lowest materialistic problems of life. That was the greatest David Amelech, who was Malchus, who presents Malchus. He takes all the spheres of the light and brings all the way down to Malchus. He sits down with a baby that was um, lost from, from premature, I um, forgot how we say. The, the, the last before, before the nine months, the, the premature birth and, and the baby uh, died. No one knew. And he was crying there with the fetus in his hand and blood with the woman. The greatest king that can sit on his throne said, I don't deal with those things. He sits down with the woman, with the female, with the tumor, with, with the, the blood, with the most, with death. All there in the lowest level on the floor. That's being a Jew. That's being a light into the nation. That's being holy. When you can deal with the Torah, with the holiness, with God in the most mundane physical thing. Did you ever ask yourself why we Jews spend so much time eating? Because we're dealing with the most one of them, two most, why this, this sexuality and eating, the two most physical thing. What we do, uh, sleeping, which we have sleeping is really pleasurable. <laughs> but those things are supposed to, we're supposed to control our sleep, not sleep more than a certain amount of hours, between six and eight hours, as we know. And we are supposed to eat in, with blessings. All our blessings is based around about eating be, before and after because we're doing something very physical and the spark, most of the sparks of holiness are hidden in the, in the eating because the eating is something physical. It wants to show you that the physical hides sparks, hides holiness. It hides the baby. The woman hides the baby in her womb. David Amelech represents that king who understands the loss of potential within the woman, the loss of spirituality, the greatness hidden within the woman. He's Malchus, he understands. And so we eat and we elevate those sparks of holiness to, to elevate the animal, the, elevate the physical. The goal is to transform the darkness into light, not to transform, to separate the light from the darkness. That's on Shabbat, what we do, we don't separate. We don't take the bad out of the good. Because that's not, that's not, in Ghana, there will be no such a thing. It's just you will take the good and the, 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 the klipa, the tuma is all a representation of the tremendous holiness that exists there. That's why woman is tameh. Right, I mean, there's a spiritual blockage because she has just experienced a tremendous spiritual loss, right? Her soul is so big, she can bring her soul down. That's why she's Tame. She needs to rebuild herself. The Klippa protects the fruit, it protects what's good inside, but the Klippa is good. If without the Klippa, the fruit will be all eaten by the worms and the, the weather will destroy it. So the Klippa is it's holy in a way. It's source, as we know. The Arizal, the Kabbalah says the source of the clipot is there's something holy inside. There's a sparks of holiness. All the darkness comes from light. Yotzev or Ubore Choshech. Right? So. So we see that with all those things that we as Jews, we have to love non-Jews. The non-Jewish world, the non-Jews and the Jews will marry each other as a nation, as a nation, not as an individual, because an individual, the head has to say the head and the heart to say the heart. So the Jews has to stay Jews and the non-Jews has to stay non-Jews. A man has to stay a man, a woman has to stay a woman. But then you get married. 
So as nations, Jews will need to marry the non-Jews. We understand that we need each other. That the brain needs the heart, the heart needs the brain. That the nation needs the Jews and the Jews need the nations. A man, just like a man needs a woman, a woman needs a man. Just like man needs God and God needs man. Because there's no needs, not in the sense that he needs us. In the sense that God cannot be king of anyone if there's, any, there's no one. I can only have a king if there are people. And we will, the, at the end of time, it says in Olam there's only Israel. Because all the nations are going to become Israel. Because we, we don't say, we don't call, well, Adam was not called Chava. Adam, the original Adam is Adam and Eve in one. So the female will become one with the male. But it's not male anymore. It's Zachar Nekeva Barosan. We were hermaphrodite. The goal is to go back to that unity where there's no separation male and female. So we're, we're both. There's the perfect harmony between the two. We'll become one with God again. We're like one. There'll be no more earth than God or Jew, men and women or Jews and non-Jews and spiritual and physical. Everything will transform itself. Transformation of the matter back to energy. We were before bodies of light and we became physical. So are we the same? We are the same. It's just if I go at the speed of light right now, I, my body would back transform, would not disappear. It would be, right, be eradicated. It would be transformed into energy. I would be energy. But if I slow down that energy, then I look like I, I become matter. Again, those are... You need to be understood on the quantum physics type of level and, 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 and deep Kabbalah level. And, and, but here we're trying to, to understand that we need to go back to that love that has disappeared. Acceptance, recognition, appreciation, love for the non-Jewish world. Right now, as I speak, and I speak about that all the time, there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of non-Jews who want to learn Torah, who want to do mitzvot, who want to be part of Israel, who want to convert. Some don't want to convert and they, don't, they shouldn't convert. Some want to, 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 to support Israel and to recognize Israel. And it's the job of Israel to be, to, to act like a man and be a giver and give to them what they need, the light that they need. But you cannot look at the nation as an enemy. Nations are not the enemy. The snake, that's not very important. The snake, the Nachash, who when the Nachash attacked? The women. He makes it believe, he makes the physical, the material look like it's, it's bad. It's temptation. It's, it's, it's inferior. No, 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 no. Big mistake. That's why the snake attacked Chava. He had no chance with Adam. He was too rash rational. He went to the weaker, what looks weaker. But he knows also the great spirituality is there. That's why he wanted, he said the snake wanted to sleep with the woman because he knows there there's tremendous power. That's all the whole thing that the, uh, at the end of Berish is that the son of man, son of Elohim, of the gods, whatever that means, they saw the women the way they feel him, they went down. Some say it's fallen angels, whatever, whether it's true or not, or what, meaning it's true, but whether it's literal or not, in that sense, some say it was the leaders, some say it was the actual angels, with the ones who challenged God, so that they saw the women who were powerful, they got, they fell, the snake was hiding in the women, so to speak. And they, they couldn't resist. But it means that they are also those understood that within the women, they can become more powerful because the super energy, what makes a man great? The woman behind every great man is a great woman. She is the one that gives the power to the man. A man with not, without a woman is not a real man, says the Talmud. There's no real man without a woman. A man without a woman doesn't have Parnassa doesn't have blessing, doesn't have joy, doesn't have Torah, doesn't have life, doesn't have nothing. 
You cannot go to Olam Abba without getting married or for a man. Because you will never be complete. You will never understand how to be one with God. You never know what it is to be a complete giver. Understand that you need the other to be one. You will never be humble enough. You will be full of yourselves. As Rashi says. Not good for a man to be alone because he's going to think he's God. So what happens is that the snake took the, the leaders of the nations. The nations are good in themselves. They, have, they hide the greatest good and they have a lot of good people, non-Jews who are like better than Jews uh, in many, many ways. I'm speaking about the, the good Jews, but not the bad Jews. You know, a, a very, very pure and holy. And... But the leaders are corrupted. The snake goes to the head, goes to the leaders. And therefore the leaders of the nations didn't want to, they prevented the, 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 the time when God gave the Torah, they say, no, 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 we don't want the Torah. We, we want to be able to control the masses and be able to do whatever we want. Look at the world today. The snake is in the hands of the nations, controlling everything. And we have to destroy that snake, Jews and non-Jews together. The job of the nation is to realize that they have misled same thing the Christians and Muslims and all the religions that are misled by leaders to only look at the, you know, the, 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 that really they, they take your energy. They want to make you busy with the physical world so that you don't pay attention to them getting your energy, your power. Like in the Matrix, it's all about sucking your energy. So we have to go back to, um, to mentality that we are not enemies. Jews and non-Jews are not enemies. We're the greatest friend. The enemy is the snake hidden in the leaders, the corrupted leaders who have been trying to control, create a separation between men and women, between the family structure, between love, between, meaning between the, 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 the two people loving each other, two opposite gender, between the spiritual and the physical, Separation between the state and church, right? All that things is represented little by little. Science and religion. No, it's all one. But the leaders try to create as many separations, 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 separations as possible. Or no differentiation, which is even worse. There's no difference between physical, spiritual, male, female, animal, human being. We are it's all one. It's a, therefore, it doesn't matter what you do. Like people say, whatever. Who cares? Yeah, those are the words of the, of the snake. So it attacks the leaders. It attacks Chava. It attacks femininity. It tries to control it. And the nations need to react and put those leaders down. When the nations are going to react and put the leaders down, when the nation are going to recognize that Israel has something good, when Israel is going to recognize that they're supposed to be leaders for the non-Jews and love them and respect them and see that there's something beautiful hidden in them, just like a man looking at a woman and see there's something beautiful hidden in them, then Moshiach will be born. But Moshiach is already born, but Moshiach will be revealed. Moshe is always here. Moshe is more than just a man. It's a state of being. Moshe ben David is a man, but Yemea Moshe, days of Moshe. Moshe is, is when everything will be one. Everything will be together. There will be complete harmony. Let's understand something straight, okay? God is just. God is perfect. God is loving. Therefore, it's impossible that God will want the death of some nations and not the other. Whoever is going to be destroyed is not... Right? God, God, God makes everything good. Therefore, he will bring back whatever was the fake, whatever was evil, whatever looks like evil will be returned back to nothingness because evil is nothingness. It's just a separation. Whatever separates men 
from God, but all the good will go back to its good. Meaning that, the, that people who think that the Jews are better or the non-Jews are better or that, 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 right, that the, 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 the idea of there's some superiority between each other, we are like misunderstanding who God is. Do you really think that's what God will want? That there's no peace, love, pu purity of, of, of the unity of love of between each, everybody. It's, 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 it doesn't make, it's absurd. It's absurd. God wants true love between everyone. This is the ultimate principle of Torah, to love your neighbor as yourself. If you cannot love a, a, a man, if you cannot love a woman, if you cannot love a Jew, if you cannot love a non-Jew, if you don't can love spirituality, if you can love physicality, if you can love even you get Sahara. You can love evil, meaning not love evil, but recognize that evil has a purpose. Then how are you gonna to get to love God? Everything is from God. All the other, all the opposites are from God. Therefore it's all good. Therefore, it's all being able to recognize the hidden secret within those things. When something bad happened in the world, or that looks bad, right? Technically, we're supposed to say, The blessing, it's, it's, it's good, it's very good. Well, we say, because we're not on the level, we can't, can't say something, we don't believe it, or know it, or feel it entirely. So we need to, to see the goodness in everything. So when something like Corona happened, we're supposed to ask, everybody's supposed to ask, what's hidden, what hidden light is hiding behind there? We need to rise up and, 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 and change our way of thinking. Again, we need to perform surgery in our brain, in our heart. So that Jews and non-Jews don't hate each other, but they start working with each other and start loving each other and, and, and start building a better world together. Don't it, don't it like, uh, doesn't mean we have to be married uh, on a physical level. So this is, they always see there's always more and more concept, but I think I covered all the essential points that we need to understand about our time to, times today. That the, this is what is gonna happen. It says this is gonna be Torah Chadasha. At the end of time, there's a Torah Chadasha, a new Torah. What does that mean, new Torah? There's no new Torah because we know the Torah is forever. It's always the same. But what it means is it's gonna be Chadash, come from Chidush. It's be renewed, meaning this, you have a Chidush. It's, not a, it's nothing new under the sun. It means, that you're going to reveal something that was never revealed before. And therefore, the Torah is going to be understood on a level that we never and never understood before. Oh, I thought I learned Torah all day. I thought, no, Torah Chadasha, even for the greatest Tamit Chacham, for the greatest sages, the greatest rabbi. Yeah, there's going to be a new Torah. There's going to be a Torah from the... Did you ever ask yourself what the 70 facets to the Torah? Oh, 70 facets of the Torah. What other thing is 70? Oh, 70 nations. Nations? Torah? No, it can be. Well, yeah, it can be can be very much because the Torah is not just for the Jews. The Torah is the guide to life for humanity. The Torah is an opportunity for all of mankind, which includes Jews and non-Jews, which is Adam, Arishon and Chava, which is all the souls, as, as the Arisa says, that needs to elevate themselves and become one and, and, and perfect each other and come back to the level in Gan Eden. And in Gan Eden, it was just Adam. So it's all of humanity and uh, finally be able to become one with God and make the right choice and elevate ourselves and live forever, ever, have, uh, happy ever after in love. Like uh, happy end in the Hollywood movies. That's, that's why we have the Torah. That's not just for the Jews. The Jews are here to the protectors of the Torah. Protector of, 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 of that precious light, that precious guidance. So when Moshe is going to come, then everybody is going to learn Torah. And the Jews will be the teachers. Is the teacher greater or the teachers better? No. The teacher hopes his students will become greater than him. Every parent wants his child to be greater than him. 
So the non-Jews are going to realize, the Jews are going to realize, the non-Jews are, like the wife is the crown of the husband, the non-Jews are going to become the crown of the Jews. As Rabbi Dinovich explained. A lot of what I say is from Rabbi Dinovich. Some things are from my rabbi, Rabbi Weinberg. Some things are from the Arizal, from the Midrash, or the Zohar. All those things may appear controversial, like I said. But the fact that what I've been saying today is controversial shows you how sick we are and how detached we are from reality. Women have been suffering for five plus thousand years of, of, of being disrespected and looked at second class citizens as inferior. It's like racism. Because you're different, because you're a different color. It's ridiculous. Rainbows, all the colors come from the light. So we have to understand that there's no inferior. There is levels, but doesn't mean better. We're not here to compare each other. When I come to Olamaba, when you go to Olamaba, it says you're going to be all alone. What does that mean? Don't worry, you're not going to be alone. You're connected to everyone. Global consciousness, don't worry. What it means alone, Olamaba, your reward is alone, meaning you won't be able to compare yourself to anyone else. There'll be no comparison. Because nobody is like you. There's no one like you. You're unique. Therefore, how can you be judged like someone else? You cannot be judged like someone else. You can be compared because you will need exactly the same, you know, a, a, a level of you have to be in the opposite person's shoes. Why is why you cannot judge someone? That nechav schut. You cannot judge someone negatively because if you are in his shoes, you might be actually worse than him. You don't know the intention. You know what's hidden behind. Everybody has his own package. And your package is just meant for you. Nobody has the same parents as you. Nobody. So you cannot be judged like someone else. So therefore your reward cannot be compared to anyone. There cannot be any jealousy. They were, therefore, a Jew and a non-Jew cannot compare each other. It's no, it cannot be jealousy. The heart cannot be jealous of the, of the mind and the brain cannot be jealous of the heart. My right hand shouldn't be jealous of my left hand, my left hand of the right hand. This one has a purpose of the right hand and the left. Each one has its own unique strength. Being unique in its own greatness doesn't mean that the low other one is lower. It means you're unique in that greatness and the other one has another greatness. So each one has its own greatness. It's a, at the end of time, it's the celebration of all the greatness. Instead of putting one greatness down. The greatness of the man, the greatness of the woman. It's not greater. It's the greatness. We have to remove all the words with ER at the end. Forbidden. No more better. No more smarter. No more, you know, stronger. No more, you know, er. Better, all the stuff. That's the snake speaking like that. No more bullying. No more bullying of the woman. Because of that, society has created the women, says Ben Shetrit, into men. So much so that the men, the women in Judaism are now have to do a lot of things that men do. The mitzvahs, praying three times a day, all that. Because they have to regain that femalehood that they have lost. Society has created, made a good job in transforming the woman and letting the woman lose all her femininity and become super male. Now we have to reverse that. So, so we have to um, go back to be authentic. Authentic men, authentic women, authentic love. Love yourself, appreciate yourself without the need to compare and put others down to appreciate yourself. You're lovable. Accept that you're tremendously great. No matter who you are, listen to this video. You're tremendously great. And God loves you more than anything in the world. 
and he can only God can love everybody greater than it's like you're a child of God, so God loves us all the same. Doesn't matter you're a man, a woman, a Jew, and a non-Jew, he loves all of you. Even if there's an evil person listening to me, meaning evil, nobody's intrinsically evil unless you're not a human soul, then you're a demon or something, then that's different. I'm not talking about that, but you're loved by God. No matter if you feel you're not a good person, you're lying to yourself. Lying to yourself. Stop it. God loves you with all your schmutz, dirt, mistakes, all that. God created all that. God gave you life this morning, then he's crazy in love with you. Why would he spend his time giving you birth or giving life to you again and again every morning? Come on. Are you delusional? Do you realize what's happening? That your heart is beating? Who makes your heart beat? You know better than an iPhone. You need to recharge. Who recharges you? God. God is electricity. So we have to get rid of that low self-esteem. That low self-esteem is the snake talking in us. He said, you're physical. You are full of temptation and tuma. Tuma means you have tremendous potential. If you were not tame, if you're not impure, that means you didn't have purity in the first place, no holiness. The fact that you're impure shows that you have potential for being pure. The light hides in the darkness. So wake up from your sleep, Adam. Wake up from your sleeping consciousness and start accepting yourself, loving yourself, change your way, transform all the bad that is in you into good. You can do teshuva, you can change everything. The greatest, deepest, hardest thing that Man has a hard time to do is to do teshuva, to repent, to return because he doesn't believe it's possible. You have to believe it's possible. You can repent. Now, repent doesn't mean sorry only. It means you are really changing. You can't just say sorry. You have to show then love. So show love to yourself. Show love to the others. Forgive yourself. Then you can forgive others. We all hurt because we haven't been loved enough. The whole world is in trauma because we didn't feel enough love, starting with Adam, Arishon, till today. All the problems in the world is because we don't love each other enough. And God, since the beginning, say, just love, love, love. Even the Beatles said it. So let's start to love each other. Come on. Let's understand that this world is supposed to be a world of love. It's not me who said it. That's not because I'm French. You know that. It's the Rishis Chokhmah says say. It's the world of Atsilu, the highest of all the world. Even the world of Bria, where we say Shema, when we dive and it's Shema Yisrael, Shema Yisrael, Shema It's all about Ve'aftayt Hashem, Elkei Bukhar, Ravcha, Bukhar, Namshicha, Bukhar, Modecha. God just say, love me, love me. Does it sound familiar? Yeah. It sounds familiar because that's what every woman is screaming to every man. Love me, love me, love me. Because men are sleeping and they're not paying attention to what love can do. What can love can bring birth to. Love is the secret seed that illuminates and brings the spiritual and the holiness within the physical and, and transform the physical into spiritual. Love is one can transform the woman into the greatest being. So we're born to be one. We're born to be married. We're born to love. We're born to marry someone else, to marry the other, to become one with the opposite, to transform the dark into the darkness, the light, the darkness into the light, to elevate the low to the, to the high by bringing the high into the low for elevation. You go down in order to go higher up, trample in effect. My friends, these are the secret. So let's try to enter into the world of love, to create a world of love. As long as I know it sounds the most cliche thing, but that's what it's all about. So, uh, 
I love you all. And uh, now we just got to do it and be aware of it. Try to perform surgery in your mind, surgery of your mind and your heart. Please do surgery because this is, this is what we're suffering from. That's the real sickness. That's the real Corona. Corona it tells you we, you can't see, you don't understand. Vaccine, no vaccine. We don't, we don't understand. Yeah, because we have to pay attention to something non-physical, which is called love, which is called consciousness, and how we have to all work with each other and to be authentic. And if you're married, that's your ultimate job. Work in your couple. This is number one thing. You created to work on your marriage. It's very, very, very hard. And the snake is going to do everything to destroy it. God's only job is to unite people together. God doesn't do mistakes. God made you choose that person. So unless you're in an abusive relationship or in a relationship that mental illness, that's different. You are required to work more than anything else because your spouse, yes, is going to drive you crazy. But that craziness is the surgery. It doesn't feel good. It's painful. It hurts. We don't understand it. You don't understand the surgeon, what he's doing, but the surgery. And that's what we need to be focusing on every day of your life. How can I become more one? How can I be more married? How can I love more? So, um, God willing, may God grant you the wisdom and the patience and the love and the emotions to understand each other and to be more one married, especially the men. The men don't know how to be men. Women, be patient with your men. Allow them to <sighs> tell them what you need. Tell them how to be loved. This is the words you got to use. Be more straight with them. I need you to love me more. I want, I, I don't feel loved enough. I, I need you to show me that you love me. And very often it goes into the details. Explain to him in the details what it means, how, what you need to feel love. Because a man doesn't understand. We're not trained. In the past, maybe a little bit more. But today we have no role models. Our parents are all divorced, broken families. Show the man what it is, what you need to feel loved. Go on retreats. Work on your marriage. What, read books. Learn the Torah together. This is what needs to happen. And the man, understand you need your wife. You're nothing without your wife. Doesn't matter how many, how many times she complains and how many times, you know, she, she, she brings out, she criticizes you. Yes, there are better ways to do it. But she's your mirror. She's here for you. She's your ezer. She's here to tell you what's wrong with you. Everything that bothers you. Her, it's something in you. Why do you think God gave you a, a being that is going to tell you what's wrong with you? Because that's how it works. This is your mirror. You just have to be humble enough. You're not going to lose yourself. You still be yourself. You're going to be a greater self by doing, showing her love the way she wants. So you want to be dressed a certain way. You want to act a certain way. A real woman will not want, doesn't want to change you. She wants you to love her. Now, love requires some change. But the change has to come from you. Because when you do some change, you love her. It's not going to make you lose yourself. Love doesn't mean you love yourself. Becoming one with someone else doesn't mean you lose yourself. You're still yourself. But you do some stretching some variations we're here to work on midos midos is transforming our character traits so transformation you still yourself but you transform into someone else right we change for god mean me we do acts of of transformation for god right we we uh, we write, uh, 
wake up early in the morning different, and, and, and we, we change our diet, our schedule, our thoughts, our emotions. The wife is saying the same thing. Do the same for me. Oh, you can do it for God, but not for your spouse. So it has to go. That's how you know you're you're good. You you be a good spouse for God if you're a good spouse for your husband for your spouse for you know a good spouse for your spouse. So uh, I think I made my point clear. Work, 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 work. Everything I want to state that because it's so important. Everything that you haven't worked as a child, you're gonna have to give birth to it. As an adult, everything you haven't worked as a child and as an adult will have to work at it as a married person and give birth. Your spouse is going to push it to give birth to you when you're married. All the problems are going to be there in your marriage because you haven't dealt with them when you were a kid. All the problems that you haven't resolved from a kid, from adulthood and from your, as you're, when you're married, if you don't deal with it, you're going to give birth in your kids and your kids are going to give you hell so you can deal with all the crap that you have been keeping in yourself not working. And that's why there's so many kids rebelling. They're rebelling about the foolishness of who you are, of, of, of the problems. You don't love enough. Most of the time is love. Again, if a child feels love, why is he going to rebel like that? It's all based on love. We are being hurt as kids in love and we have not feel love. So therefore we keep that, that resentment, that jealousy, that anger, and it goes out as adulthood and then it comes out in your marriage and then it comes out uh, in your kids and then you're gonna have to face it. It's, it's, it's so obvious to see because I've been dealing with so many kids of the derech. The one who has the most of the earth are the ones who have the less love or the less or, or not just from the parents, not the parents' fault always. Sometimes it's, it's, it's the Rebbe, is the t teacher or the classmates being hurt so much that they can't stand that Judaism. They can't stand that rabbi. They can't stand that because that's not Judaism. That's not the real rabbi. I can't stand those parents who only love them because of their, how religious they are. That's not authentic. It's not love. So, your kids is your last chance. <laughs> you know, allow your kids to tell you what's wrong with you. Ask them, what's wrong with me? What's my, what's my problem? Ask your spouse, what's, what's my problem? Ask yourself, what's my problem? Your spouse, your wife will tell you. And your kids also, if they're not scared of you. If you already made them scared, then it's, uh, it's going to be harder. All right, love you all. And um, I think what we spoke was real precious jewelry of wisdom. And so be, you should listen to this video again and again, because I think it's the best preparation for Moshiach of what we need to do now. That's the real work. That's what it's all, what it's all about. So, Atzlacha, may God help you achieve true love. Amen, amen.